All right, so I want to show you how to deal with resistor capacitor circuits. And specifically, the reason these are tricky is that these quantities are going to be time dependent. So I can't just ask you, find the charge. I have to ask you, find the charge right after we close this switch, or find the charge a long time after we close this switch, or find the charge as a function of time. You can find charge as a function of time. That requires a differential equation. We'll do that in another video. For now, let's just focus on how you would find the initial state or the long-term state, which people call the steady state. So in other words, before I've closed this switch, nothing interesting is going on, the circuit's broken, no current's flowing, and we're gonna assume this capacitor starts off uncharged, so there's no energy here at all. Right when we close the switch, however, current starts to flow out of the battery, comes down here, and it's gonna branch off, it's gonna go two ways, now you might think, whoa, it can't take this path because there's a capacitor here, but it does. It has no problem initially taking that path. Current has no problem traveling through a uncharged capacitor, and it's not really traveling through it. Like what's really happening is that charge is starting to build up here, and then that pushes a charge off the other end. But if you just sat here, it would look like current flows right through here. You'd be like, charge is going into this side, coming out that side, I mean, what's really happening, happening, this is like a parking lot. Charge is coming in, parking, another car charge drives out. It's not the same charge, so nothing's actually flowing through the capacitor, but it's gonna look like it's flowing through the capacitor. And this capacitor initially, this uncharged capacitor initially has no resistance to the flow of current. So current has no problem flowing right through a capacitor. That capacitor is just gonna act like a wire. So initially, you can act like this capacitor is not even there. You can act like it's just connected by a wire, and that's the circuit you have. But there's been no time for the charge to build up. If we're talking about immediately afterward, no time yet for charge to build up. The charge is zero. And if the charge is zero, remember the formula for capacitance. Capacitance is Q over V, and V then is Q over C. If you got no charge on a capacitor, you got no voltage. So the voltage across the capacitor is zero, and similarly, the energy in a capacitor is one half CV squared. If you got no voltage across capacitor, you got no energy in that capacitor. So the capacitor is not really doing much initially, it's just acting like a wire, but current's allowed to flow. So how much current flows? Well, let's do a loop rule. We'll do the easiest one first. Let's do this one here, because all I have is a battery and one resistor. But that means the voltage across R2 has to be the entire V naught. So this resistor's connected straight to the battery, nothing in between it. I could do a loop with just the battery and R2. That means the voltage across R2 is the entire V naught. So there's V naught across R2. How about R1? If we take this path, you might be like, uh oh, there's three things there. We get plus V naught going through the battery. But remember, there's no voltage across C1. It's as if this capacitor is not there. It's as if initially in the initial state, it's like a wire. So the entire drop has to be across R1. Remember, all these voltage gains and drops have to add up to zero. I gained V0. I didn't gain or lose anything through C1. There's no voltage through there initially. So R1 has to also have the entire V0 if you consider this loop rule. So finding the currents aren't going to be that bad. I can do current through R1 is just going to be V0 over R1, because V0 is the entire voltage across it, so I get V0 over R1 is the current through R1. Similarly, I would get the current through R2 is gonna be V0 over R2. How about the current through the capacitor? You could say it's zero, because technically nothing passes through these plates, but it's gonna look like it's V0 over R1. It's gonna look like it's the same as this current passing this way. And then for power, you can always find power. Power is I squared R, or in this case, it's easier to use V naught squared over R because the voltage across both of them is V naught. So V naught squared over R1 would be the power used by R1. And V naught squared over R2 is gonna be the power used by R2. So those are the initial states of these values. And remember the capacitor initially acts like it's just a wire. So now the next question is, what if we leave this hooked up for a really long time? We just allow this to continue being connected. And we ask after this switch has been connected for a long time, and that's known as the steady state. Now, what are the values of these? Well, 
The defining feature of the steady state is that this capacitor is going to build up charge. It's going to keep building up. What was an empty parking lot that offered no resistance to charge becomes a full parking lot. And at this point, current comes out of the battery, comes this way, looks over here and is like, man, this is backed up. I can't go that way at all. So the capacitor completely backs up that branch of the circuit and no more current will flow through any branch that has a capacitor in it in the steady state no more current flows this way at all. So the R1 is gonna have zero current through it. And then we can just say, well, if there's zero current through R1, the voltage through R1 has to also be zero because if you're a resistor and you got no current, you got no voltage. And if you got no voltage and no current, you've got no power. Well, how about R2? I mean, we could do the same loop rule we did before. Nothing changes here. R2 still gets the full voltage of the battery, so the voltage across R2 is gonna be V0. The current through R2, again, is gonna be Ohm's law. V0 over R2 is the current through R2. Nothing changed. R2 is like, man, you guys, R1, C1, you guys do whatever you want. I'm hooked up straight to the battery, I'm good. But now the capacitor is going to have charge on it. So if you wanna find the charge on this capacitor, you use capacitance as Q over V, or in other words, Q equals C, times V. So the capacitance is C1, but what's the voltage across this capacitor? If we imagine taking this loop right here, the tables have turned now. All the voltage used to be across R1, but now none of the voltage is across R1. That means all the voltage has to be across C1. This capacitor had no voltage initially. Now it's got all the voltage in this loop because it's got to contribute the full V0 drop. This R1 contributes no drop to this loop and they've all got to add up to zero. So if you plus V0 for the battery, doing the loop rule, then you got to subtract the entire V0 across C1 because there's no voltage drop across R1. Now the voltage across C1 is the entire V0 of the battery. So I can just plug that in over here. This would be V0. That means the charge across the capacitor C1 in the steady state after you've left this connected for a long time is just going to be C1 times V0. How about the energy? Energy in a capacitor is one half C V squared. And so I can write this as one half C one times V naught squared, because that's the voltage across the capacitor. And that gives me the energy stored in this capacitor. If I wanted the current through the capacitor, well, no more current through this path. It gets no more current. And the last thing I could find if I wanted to is the power used by this R2. Power is V naught squared over R as always. And so we could just do V naught squared over R2 would be the power used by R2. Now, before we leave this example, I wanna show you one more thing. What if we reopen the switch after it's been connected for a long time? So we come over to here, we reopen the switch. Well now, no more current can flow through the battery. That's broken off but I've got some stored up energy here in C1. So what's gonna happen is this charge is now going to start flowing around here in this direction. But then it has to make a right turn here. It can't come up here and go through here because the switch is open. So now I have this little circuit down here. This current's gonna flow through R1 and R2. So this is like a second initial state. If you close it initially, that's initial state. If you leave it closed, that's steady state. And then if you reopen it, you can have like a third option, which is like a second initial state. This capacitor is going to act like a little battery. It's going to have a voltage V0 stored up. And initially, if I wanted to know the current through this little loop, I could do delta V equals I times R, or in other words, I equals delta V over R. The delta V is the V of the capacitor, so it starts off at V0. Now, it's not going to stay V0. Batteries have an energy source that keeps the voltage roughly constant, but capacitors don't have any such stored energy inside, chemical energy that's going to keep this voltage what it is. It's going to start V0, and it's going to slowly die off. So you have V0, and then divided by these R1 and R2 are all in series, because the same current flows through both of them. Remember, all you have now is this little loop here. Nothing comes up here whatsoever. So R1 and R2 in series. So for this second initial state, you'd initially have a current that's this big, but it would die off. This capacitor is not going to be able to maintain that voltage. This current would start to die off. But this is what it would be immediately after you reopen that switch. So let's try another one just for practice. Let's say you have this case uh, with this setup. And again, let's say you close the switch and we want to know what are the 
immediate initial states for all of this. Well, you know by now, if this capacitor wasn't charged initially, there's been no time for it to charge up, so there's no charge, no voltage, no energy. There might be current, so we'll find out what that is in a minute. And then we just ask, you know, if I was current, what would I do? Well, I have to come out of the battery, then I have to go through R1, I have no choice. I get to this junction, and I have a choice. I can go through R2, or I could travel through C1 to get to this point over here. Well, remember, the defining feature of a capacitor initially that's not charged is it offers no resistance. So if I'm a current, shoot, I'm not even messing with R2 whatsoever. I'm not even going to take that path at all. Current's going to take the path of least resistance. And if C1 offers no resistance, then I'm entirely taking that path. So it's as if R2 isn't even here now, and I can find the current. So I get the current that flows through this circuit's going to be V0 divided by the only resistance in this loop is R1. Remember, there's no voltage across C1. So if I did a loop rule and I went from here all the way to there, I'd plus V0, I'd subtract some voltage across R1, and then I have no gain or drop here. So R1 has to get the entire voltage drop for this loop. And the current through R1 is just going to be V0 over R1. Because it has, if it has a voltage V0 across R1 and a resistance R1, then the current here is V0 over R1. That's also going to be the current that flows. Now, flows in like quotation marks. It doesn't really flow through this capacitor, but it looks like it does to an outside observer. It's really charges getting plastered on the front here and getting removed over here. And then current through R2 initially is just going to be zero. Why would current ever go through R2 when it can take this path here that has no resistance? So no current through R2. If I'm current, I'm not even messing with R2 initially. That means there's going to be no voltage across R2. There's going to be no power used by R2. And the power used by R1 is our old friendly V squared over R. So those are the initial states. What if you allow this to be connected for a long time and we want to know about the steady state? So we connect this. We allow this to be connected for a really long time. Well, now instead of just acting like a wire, the defining feature for a capacitor in the steady state is that it acts like a break in the circuit. It does not allow any current to pass this way anymore once this capacitor is charged up. So now I just have current coming around this way. So if I do a loop rule here, this is the only important part of the circuit. No current comes this way whatsoever. So the current that comes out of the battery all runs through R1. Now it looks on down here, it's like, man, that parking lot's full. I'm not messing with that. It comes through R2. This time, this path with the capacitor is as if it offers infinite resistance to the flow of current since that parking garage is full. I mean, what's really happening is these pluses are repelling any pluses that would try to come down here. And so they all travel through here. Now I can find the current. The current through this loop here is gonna be V0 over. Well, these are two resistors in series now. You might be like, no, they're not. There's a junction here. Well, this junction doesn't matter. No current comes this way. So you just disconnect this for all you care. As, as far as this current's concerned, this path doesn't even exist because no current goes that way. So these two resistors are in series in the steady state. This would be the current through R1 and R2. So current through R1, current through R2 are the same. Current through the capacitor now is zero. No current's going to be going that way. If I wanted to find voltage across R1, I could do delta V across R1 is going to be current through R1 times R1. So I'm going to have to take this value here and multiply by R1. So voltage across R1 is going to be V0 over R1 plus R2 times R1. What would be different for R2? We're just going to multiply by R2 because the current's the same for both of these resistors. So technically it's I2. That's the same value. All that'd be different is you have R2 here and times R2. Those are the voltages across R1 and R2. How about voltage across the capacitor? Now you might be like, well, it's zero. No current goes that way. But voltage across a capacitor doesn't depend on the current. What does the voltage across a capacitor depend on? We'll go back to the capacitor formula. Capacitance is Q over V. And that means V equals Q over C. If you've got charge on a capacitor, there's going to be a voltage across that capacitor. We've got charge on the capacitor. So there's going to be a voltage across it, but I don't know the charge or the voltage across this capacitor. So what do I do? Well, I just look at the fact that this capacitor is in parallel with this R2. Now for any two circuit elements, be they capacitors or resistors or whatever, if they're in parallel, they're going to have the same voltage. So the voltage across C1 
has to be the same as the voltage across R2, you might be like, I don't buy it. Well, just do a loop roll. Just imagine a loop roll here. You only got two elements. Whatever gain there was in one in voltage has to be dropped in the other. So they have to have the same size voltage change. And that just means the voltage across R2 is going to be the same as the voltage across C1. So this is a trick. This is the hardest part is like, shoot, how do I find the voltage across here? You don't. You find the voltage across something that it's in parallel with, and then you use that voltage because you know it has to be the same as over here. And that'll let us find the charge on this capacitor. So if I want to know the charge on C1, I could do charge is C1 times the voltage, but I know the voltage was V0 over R1 plus R2 times R2. So I could put that up here. I've got C1, V0, R2 all over R1 plus R2. If you wanted the energy stored, it's going to get a little ugly here. Energy stored in a capacitor is 1 half Q times V. So this would just be 1 half the Q, C1, V0, R2, over R1 plus R2 multiplied by V. What was the V? It was this. V0 over R1 plus R2 times R2. So if you simplify this, you're just going to get a 1 half C1 V0 squared R2 squared over R1 plus R2 squared. And then you can find the power through these resistors without too much trouble power through a resistor is I squared R. So the power through resistor one is gonna be I, which is V naught over R1 plus R2. You square that, you multiply by R1. That would be the power used by resistor R1. And the power used by resistor R2, well, the current's the same as the current through one. So that would be the same. You just have an R2 here to find the power used by R2. So things to keep in mind for these types of problems in the initial state, capacitors just act like a wire that offer no resistance. But in the steady state, capacitors act like a break in the circuit that don't allow any current to flow through that branch of the circuit. And then you use normal loop rule or Ohm's law to figure out what you need to figure out. And then the really tricky part is that if you want to know something about this capacitor, you're going to have to remember that to figure out the voltage across a capacitor, look for something that it's in parallel with, and you know that the voltage across that thing, R2 in this case, is the same as the voltage across that capacitor, and that'll allow you to find charge or energy or whatever else you want to find.